are Nikki and Carlo and our family live in Positano, Italy, nearly 500 steps from the road but surrounded by fruit and olive trees and with a fabulous view. Our garden overlooks the sea and we grow our own food. We show you what life is really like on the Amalfi Coast. So please subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diary. Good morning. Stamattina stiamo andando a visitare Loco Rotondo. Yeah, we thought we'd get it out the way. It's a very, very um, well-known place to visit in Puglia. And I've never been before, neither is Carlo. So we're going to go and have a quick look. We've got to fly the drone above it because Rotondo means round and it's been built in a spiral. So we have to see it from above. And then we will go exploring after that. We're not sure where, but we'll take you along with us. Okay, andiamo, let's go. This is the entrance to the Centro Storico, the old part of town. It's right opposite a little park with a war memorial where Carlo is currently making friends with one of the locals, <laughs> of course. Turisti non sono solo a Positano. In Italia i turisti sono everywhere. Anche noi siamo turisti, vero amore? Oggi sì. Loco Rotondo is a town of about 14,000 residents, which makes it more than three times bigger than Positano. It's listed as one of the most beautiful towns in Italy. In recent years, it's become famous due to the beautiful way the residents decorate the historical town centre at Christmas time. The narrow lanes, whitewashed houses with pots of flowers and fairy lights become a Christmas wonderland and make for a very photographic setting. not the um, most pretty angle but that building is from 1590 that's one of the oldest buildings i've seen in a while okay so we've had a walk around loco rotondo it only took about 10 15 minutes huh? minutes, eh? yeah it's very very small um, much smaller than i thought it was going to be i thought it would take longer to explore but it's very very compact the centro centro storico and it's very quiet sì. Siamo stati anche fortunati, non ci sono troppe persone e anche perché io penso che una volta usciti dalla porta di casa siamo tutti turisti, quindi anche noi a Positano quando usciamo di casa siamo turisti. Mm. But seeing as this is such a good Instagram location and a lot of Instagrams come here, I thought it would be packed with tourists, but it's either maybe early, I mean it's quarter past 11 now, so we've come quite early in the day. But yeah, it's lovely, it's been real pleasure walking around. Mi piace qua. Vogliamo venire qua a vivere? No. <ride> Ogni prossimo, ma solo per provare a capire dove vuole vivere, perché i Positano forse quando saremo vecchi sono troppe scale. Quindi... We'll find somewhere eventually. Sì. Um, where should we go now? Non lo so, magari andiamo verso il mare, chi lo sa? That's good idea. Non abbiamo fatto piani. Yeah. All right, let's go and find a beach. Vieni, Indy. Sì. So we've driven from Loco Rotondo to Savaletri, which is just like 25 minutes drive, and we're now at the beach. Except it's not really a beach, it's more of a port. Just a little one though. Beautiful colour. I think we might have lunch here. Yeah? Sorry. You hungry? Sì, sì, ho fame. Tu sai che sempre fame. Yeah, we'll have lunch here. There's lots of little cafes along the beachfront here. And it's very quiet again. So we found this little bar right on the beachfront here. With a little strip of grass and Indy loves it. I think this is actually her first time on grass. It is rather hard to sit and have a nice quiet drink with this little monster.
So I think we've lost her. We were going to go and eat somewhere else, but we're actually happy here. The dogs are happy here. They've got space to sniff around. And um, so we just ordered some food. We're going to see what we've got, some local stuff. We've got three types of fish, I think, and some vegetables. We were just driving up the coast, um, looking for a beach actually, but we've realized that all along here, it's all grass, grassy areas, and loads of parking, loads of free parking, grassy areas instead of beaches. Look at this, it's amazing, it's flat. I'm not sure if there's a beach here or not. No, it's not too far. Now, i show you from above. So I have found a little bit of beach, that's it, lovely yellow sandy beach, but that's it, just that tiny bit there, and the rest of it is all rock. We're just driving past, look at this beach club. So we were driving along, we could see on the map that there was a big, big, long, sandy beach. So we thought we'd go there, but we can't because in Italy, the beaches can be private and they've privatized this whole long strip of beach and there's absolutely no way you can get onto it. There's just gates all the way along and it's all different beach clubs, but they're all closed because it's not really summer season here yet. And there's absolutely no way we can get onto this big, big, enormous beach, which is a real shame because I think beaches should be for everyone. Sì, non dovrebbe essere così in Italia, ma è così. Ci dovrebbero sempre essere una pozione di spiaggia non a pagamento. Uh, perché succede questo in Italia? Ovviamente perché l'Italia è un paese turistico, tante persone vanno a mare, non solo gli italiani, ma anche i turisti appunto, e quindi in qualche modo guadagnano. Però il problema è che non rimangono le spiagge libere, non nei posti belli almeno. Ecco, non bisogna mai, mai dire mai, c'è una spiaggia proprio dietro di noi. A nice big sandy beach with hardly anybody on it again. I wonder if it's always like this. Magari adesso faccio il bagno, ho portato il pantaloncino e sta nell'auto. Che dici? Vado a prendere. Adesso faccio una prova a test per vedere la temperatura dell'acqua. Poi dopo deciderò se mi butto oppure no. Ok, vado a marci indietro, così dal mio viso capirete se l'acqua è fredda oppure no. Non vi dico niente, solo la mia faccia. Diciamo che non sono convinto, non è proprio <ride> Dai, no, lo devo fare. I can't think of it anything that I'd less like to do than throw myself in the sea, but Carlos just brought me my swimsuit which was in the car. I'm not sure about this. Call me out tiger. Call me out, don't you? Lift me up higher. Of the clouds, won't you learn? <laughs> the scenery is right, right. I want to fall deep within. Don't leave me hanging just because I'm too proud. Whisper. 
com'era l'acqua? It was actually really good. I'm really glad I did that. I've, I'm reading, actually, I just finished it last night, a book called Waterlog by Roger Deakin, I think. And he basically swims his way around the British Isles in all the lakes and swimming holes and rivers and drains and stuff that he can find. And that's what inspired me to do that because I normally would not have got in the water today. And I'm really glad I did. Maybe this is the beginning of a new chapter in my life. Nikki swimming Positano. <laughs> It's about 23 degrees today, maybe a little bit less. I reckon it's like more 22 degrees. So it's not hot, hot. Um, the dogs are fine on the beach. We were hoping that Indy was going to follow us into the water, but not interested yet. Maybe when she's a bit bigger, maybe when it's a bit hotter. We just pulled over on the side of the road and there's this fig tree plantation on both sides here and the figs are enormous. Molto basse, così che si possono raccogliere facilmente i fighi, non come da noi che stanno uh. a 5 metri da terra. Fig trees we had in the garden at home, which Luke has cut right back this year, so we won't have any figs this year. They were so high we couldn't reach any of the figs ever. It was really frustrating. Um, but these are all really low. Come mi piace questa cosa che puoi arrivare con la macchina fino a davanti a casa, è bellissimo, lo amo. Ostuni is known as La Città Bianca, the White City. It's one of the main tourist destinations in Puglia. It's about eight kilometers from the coast, which makes it really easy to go to the beach and back. And apparently it's the fifth most popular town in Italy for British expats to live in. Ostuni is a lovely city, but it's a little bit touristy for us, no? Sì, ok, non è come Positano, però c'è un sacco di turisti anche qua. And that's not what we wanted to see, so we've just sat in a little bar here and we've had a drink and we've talked to the barman and we found somewhere lovely to go and visit, so we're going to go off exploring the coastline. Sono citato, andiamo! We wanted to film something in this square before and talk to you, but we couldn't. It was incredibly noisy. There's music playing in every single bar around us. And there was also a political protest going on over here. And there was a man with a loudspeaker here protesting about God knows what. And it was very, very noisy. But now he's packed up and gone. So this is the main square of Ostonia. It's very, very pretty, surrounded by bars. Very lovely. But as I said before, we're off to the beach. We ended up driving down to a little town called Torre Santa Sabina and we decided to stop for lunch here. It's one o'clock, so perfect time to stop. And there's all these little cafes on the beachfront here. So we've just chosen one and we sat down. We asked them to bring a little bit of water for the dogs. <laughs> They've basically got a paddling pool now. Mi hanno portato una barca piena di pesce. Incredibile. Wow, I might have to help you with that. I ended up not eating. Um, <laughs> doesn't always go well. I mean, we're in Italy and yeah, the food is generally pretty good, but today my lunch was not pretty good at all. I ordered fish and it was a type of fish we'd never heard of before, but he swore that it was really good and it wasn't. It was very, very dry and it was full of those tiny little bones that 
you get in every mouthful and I, I just can't swallow them and I think I've got to the point in my life where I think five years ago I probably would have eaten it and just eaten it to keep the waiter happy but I've got to the point where if I don't like something and I'm not enjoying it I'm not gonna do it anymore so I didn't eat my lunch which was a first and um, Carlos was lovely Carlo had that amazing antipasta you saw and I had a big big plate of pasta which he couldn't even finish um, and he was perfectly happy with his but for once I didn't have any lunch that's okay I've got biscuits and orange juice in the car <laughs> We forgot to bring our swimsuits. We've got nothing to swim in. Oh and no! It's absolutely beautiful here. Oh wow, this is davvero brutto. But it's your fault, not mine. Sì, sì, è colpa mia. Sì, aspetta. Scusa, amore, è, mi è colpa mia. Ho dimenticato il costume e tutto il resto. Sono davvero terribile. Non mi pentirò mai di questo errore. Non possiamo fare il bagno nudi, vero? No, no, con la gente no. No. No, no, ma nemmeno da soli, da soli sì. È davvero incredibile come ho fatto dimenticare di portare i costumi. Adesso sono arrabbiato con me stesso alla grande. Vabbè, che devo fare? Andiamo a cercare un posto nascosto, ci facciamo il bagno noi. Nuove amicizie stanno nascendo. Dio che bello. Even I would have swum here. <laughs> Chi non vorrebbe? So, of course, even though he has no swimwear, it's not going to stop him because the water is so delicious looking. He's got to try it, so he's going in in his shorts. <laughs> I really want to go in as well, but it's helpful. This is whether it's a good idea. I have a flesh coloured underwear on and it's going to look like I'm naked and I know there's only another couple here but I don't really want to do that Cos'è la differenza tra Olli e Indy laggiù? è che Olli rimane con noi e non si muove Indy invece scappa via vero Nicky? The time it took for you to jump in she was gone I don't know where she was. You are naughty. <laughs> We have come to the end of our trip in Puglia. I hope you've enjoyed coming around with us. We're on our way back now. We've just had to stop at the side of the road though because look at this behind us. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen the photo we took the other day in a poppy field. It wasn't this one. It was much, much smaller. If I'd known this was here, I would have waited and done it here. But um, what, you, what I told you was that as soon as I stepped into the poppy field, a bee flew up under my dress, came around behind me here and stung me three times. Um, luckily, I have got a, quite a resistance to bee stings because my dad was a beekeeper. So when I was young, 
and got stung tons of times. So you keep a resistance forever. So it wasn't too bad, but I've still got signs. You can still see where they stung me. Um, so I won't be going into this puppy field and dancing this time, but let's just admire it for a while.